Well, uh, as Bill indicated, I'm the Executive Associate Director for Homeland Security Investigations. Uh, we've been Homeland Security Investigations ever since the Department of Homeland Security was created in 2003. And Homeland Security Investigations is one of the two directorates within U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. We are a border security investigations component. We conduct long-term internationally, internationally based criminal investigations into transnational organized crime. We have 200 offices in the United States and 67 offices internationally. And that is key to our success. Having the international component to work with our foreign counterparts in law enforcement as well as in the private sector. We've been very, very successful. And I'd like to thank today, before I continue, I'd like to thank the, the uh, coordinators of this conference for Interpol, Mr. Ku and Mr. Ellis, for Underwriters Laboratory, Mr. Williams and Mr. Monks. We certainly appreciate your partnership. Also, the Vietnam National Police, we appreciate you hosting us and hosting this great event in this uh, great city. Now on to one of the things that has resulted as, as a result of uh, HSI's involvement in intellectual property rights and IP theft. It's the Intellectual, intellectual Property Rights Center. As you heard yesterday from Mr. Macias, who gave a case study, there are a lot of great investigations that, are, that take place out of the IPR Center. And one of the things that has made the IPR Center so successful and that HSI is so proud of is the fact that we are a true task force with 20 different entities participating, domestic and foreign. And it's so important to that collaboration. But the key component to the success of the Intellectual Property Rights Center has been our partnership with the trademark holders and private companies. That has been a key because we've been able to learn about the different companies. We've been able to conduct our investigative work with all of our federal, state, and local partners and international partners. And as you well know, intellectual property crime poses significant risks to public health and safety, drains our economy of important jobs, and funds international organized crime. And in this day, it's all about money. All these criminal organized crime entities are in it for one thing, and that is to earn money. They don't pay taxes, and they don't have the ability to create long-term sustainable jobs. They often prey on those at the margins of society to sell their counterfeit goods and steal jobs from those who certainly are, would be worthy of employment. Fake medicines, counterfeit pesticides, Counterfeit car parts pose a significant risk to the public all around the world. As we've heard over and over again during yesterday's great speeches, the partnership is what is the most important thing here. In the United States, the IPR Center was created because no one agency alone could meet the demands of intellectual property rights theft. We also know that no one country can do that either. So that's why it's so important to have venues like this where we can get together and we can discuss the issues. And today you're going to be having breakout sessions later in the day and it's, it's going to be key to continue to nurture those partnerships that have already existed and those who have yet to be born. So. When you go out to these sessions, as uh, Mr. Ross indicated, they're interactive. It's a time to engage in thoughtful discussion, share ideas, and we must continue that. But we partner very closely with Interpol, Europol, the Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation Forum, and the World Customs Organization. As a result, the international law enforcement community has been innovative and collaborative. But we're at a point now where we really have to enhance our efforts because the bad guys are not getting any slower or less smart. 
They're getting smarter and more sophisticated. And we have to do our best. And with these partnerships, it's the only way that we're going to be able to combat the significant problem. Today, those transnational criminal organizations engaged in IP theft cannot survive but for the fact that we investigate and seize their goods and their proceeds. As I indicated earlier, it's all about the profit. These organizations continue to expand into all aspects of IP theft with the primary purpose of generating criminal proceeds regardless of the impact on health and safety of their consumers. Counterfeit toothpaste, for example, and personal care products often contain harmful chemicals. Counterfeit airbags are being installed in cars around the world, which can ultimately kill people. Even cancer medication has been counterfeited with no active ingredient or the wrong ingredient. For example, in September 2013, a resident of Florida in the United States was sentenced to two years in federal custody for operating an illicit pharmaceutical scheme out of his home that sold more than $7 million worth of unapproved and misbranded counterfeit cancer medications. The HSI and Food and Drug Administration, again, there's that partnership, began in early 2010 after law enforcement authorities from the United Kingdom's Medicines and Healthcare Regulatory Agency, another partner, advised U.S. authorities that they had been intercepted, they had intercepted a shipment of an unapproved form of cancer drug sent from a company in Pakistan to a company in San Diego, California. The unapproved drugs came from foreign suppliers in Turkey, India, and Pakistan, and were sold to doctors in the United States. I think that certainly shows the scope of the problem and its worldwide effects on all of us. The IPR Center has seen significant progress under the leadership of Mr. Macias and Mr. Ross. A 76% increase in cases open, a 52% increase in arrests, and a 69% increase in agent hours dedicated to IP crime. And that's all in the last four years. Now, let's put that into perspective with regards to HSI as a whole. In HSI as a whole, last year we opened up 35,000 criminal investigations into money laundering, counterproliferation investigations, child exploitation, not just IP enforcement. Our portfolio is very large. We're empowered to enforce more than 400 criminal statutes, and our, our mission is very broad, but always with a nexus to the border. Also, together with our partners at U.S. Customs and Border Protection, we made more than 24,000 seizures last year with a manufacturer suggested retail price of $1.75 billion. In the last four years, the IPR Center alone is responsible for more than 1,260 convictions of IP crimes. And the threat of arrest and prosecution are pervasive among those who manufacture and sell counterfeit goods. These people are going to jail. We're making progress, but we still face significant challenges. Again, the public and private partnerships are key to our success. We're seeing counterfeit products shipped through express consignment couriers, smaller amounts, harder to detect by our customs authorities, that's why it's critical that we work closely with our customs authorities in our respective countries. They're also going through the mail services. One of the emerging threats targeted by the IPR Center is proliferation of IP crimes conducted over the Internet. Criminal organizations have increased their profit margins and expanded their reach internationally by creating sophisticated websites that have been identified pursuant to great criminal investigative work. Operation In Our Sites was created to combat these counterfeit websites. It's resulted in the seizure of domain names, seizure of assets, as well as significant criminal prosecutions. 
Information sharing and training conducted worldwide has also yielded some pretty significant results for the IPR Center. Again, the outreach is significant to getting the message out to all of our partners, both public and private. In 2013, the IPR Center and our HSI attache office in Manila sponsored training in Manila on illicit trade and the transnational organizations that compromise the integrity of pharmaceutical supply chains. HSI Manila worked with the Philippine National Bureau of Investigation and with the assistance from Pfizer Global Security conducted a joint investigation into a company in the Philippines that sold counterfeit Pfizer products. The operation resulted in the seizure of several types of counterfeit pharmaceuticals and two arrests for violations of the intellectual property code of the Philippines. The central goal of the IPR Center is to provide a one-stop shop for law enforcement and industry in the United States and to those multinational corporations that are affected by IP theft. This is designed to increase the support, communication, and coordination and the cooperation for our ongoing IP investigative efforts. Now, we've garnered some pretty significant results that I'm very proud to share with you today. Since July 2008, the IPR Center has coordinated and conducted almost 1,800 outreach and training events that have consisted of 38,000 industry representatives and 12,400 foreign government officials being trained. This is quite an accomplishment. And it shows our commitment to sharing our knowledge, our resources, as well as our methodology in conducting these types of criminal investigations. And since we're in Vietnam, let me share a partnership success story that resulted from training. After conducting extensive ivory trafficking enforcement training with officials of the government of Vietnam, the authorities went out and seized 1.3 tons of ivory that was being shipped from Africa through Vietnam to a third country. This is a significant success that resulted in the identifying and dismantling of a transnational criminal organization who made millions of dollars on the sale of illicit and endangered wildlife products. We must continue to work together to com combat the effects of these crimes. The effect is great on our gl global economy. This challenge will continue. And for the eight years that this conference has been in effect, it's grown every year. To me, that signifies that there is a problem and that there's an increasingly large number of people who want to address the problem. So as you continue through your day, please, Nurture the current relationships, make new ones, and let's certainly band together to continue this fight into IP theft. Thank you very much for your time this morning, and have a great day and the rest of the week.